everybody. I had a request for network address translation. The request went something like, I have limited resources, a limited number of routers. How can I really practice this? Well, I'm going to share it with you right now in just under 10 minutes, how you can do it with just three routers. We're going to do NAT a couple different ways and PAT, port address translation, a couple different ways, including being able to verify that it's really working. Thanks for the request. Let's get started. When we boil it all down, there's several different flavors of network address translation that we could use. I'd like to share with you four of them and demo, demo walking through them with just three routers. That way, if you have three routers in GNS or three real routers, you can set it up, practice it till the cows come home. So the four options we're going to do today right now are dynamic NAT, where we have a range of users that are going to be translated into a pool of addresses. So dynamic NAT with a pool is a one-to-one -one correlation. First user gets the first address, second user gets the next address, and so forth. And whatever order the router chooses to hand out those IP addresses, I don't even care. It's dynamic. We're not hard coding it. Well, what if you need a specific IP address every time? Well, then we could use static NAT. With static NAT, we're simply going to hard code a single IP address to match a single IP address on the outside interface of the NAT device. So we can translate it every time, and that works both directions. So we have somebody out on the internet who's trying to reach a server who has a static NAT address. No problem, static NAT works like a champ. Another couple of options that we have is when we don't have enough IP addresses to go around. We have PAT, that's port address translation. And with that, we can translate the whole world back here into a single IP address. Now, we're going to use an ACL to identify who that range of users are. And then we're going to use a NAT pool with a range of one. I know that sounds silly, but by specifying that one IP address with the keyword overload, we're simply telling the router, go ahead and do PAT and load them up as maximum number as you have ports to support. That's a whole bunch. The other option is we can do the same technique here, but not even need a, um, a pool. We can just go ahead and use the outside interface of R2 as the PAT address. So here's the four options that we're going to do. Let's get started with the first one right now. We're going to need some access list to identify who can be translated. So I've got a plan in place. We're going to do this all on R2, so I'll get on the right router to start with. And in configuration mode, we'll create three access lists. One that identifies the 60 network, one that identifies the 80 network, and one that identifies the 90 network. Now, the access lists here are not for filtering traffic. They're simply to identify who is going to qualify to be translated. All right, now that our access lists are in place, we're also going to need a couple of NAT pools. So we can create a NAT. We'll just use obvious kind of funny names. We'll create a NAT pool called 60 pool for NAT using the range 20 through 254 on this outside network right here. And we'll create a pool called 80 pool, which we'll go ahead and use for the actual uh, PAT. So in just a moment, not yet, right now, all these commands are just sitting in the global config, not really being leveraged. We're going to use this pool for the NAT, for the 1 to 1, 20 to 254, and we'll use this pool to check out the range. It has a range of 1. That's this guy right here that we're going to leverage. So now that we're all set up, we have the ACLs to identify who can be translated. We have the two pools, one with some IP addresses and one with one. The next thing we're going to do is going to go ahead and set up the actual NAT rules. And this is actually pretty simple. The very first one, we're saying IP NAT inside source and we're going to say, why don't we use list 60? If traffic matches the source address of IP access list 60, we want to go ahead and associate those users with the pool called 60 pool for NAT. Then we'll do an IP NAT inside source static for the one IP address that will be translated to the other IP address. And then we'll do an IP NAT inside source list 80 for everybody who's going to be translated to the one IP address in the pool called 80 pool for PAT. And then we're going to load everything else that matches Axelist 90 to the outside interface. Those four commands right there are these four right here. If you need to pause it or want to pause it and come back and look at those, I would encourage you to make sure you're comfortable with them. So this one right here, this list 60 going to that pool is this command right here. The next one is the static NAT for 70. The next one's 80. And this one's 90. I just did them in that order so they could keep, kind of keep sense of them. So now that we have that set up, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to tell the router that its interfaces are going to be involved in network address translation. So on R2, I'm going to say, dear Mr. R2, FA00 is part of the inside network for NAT. 
and FA01 is the outside interface. And that's pretty simple too. Now the very first time you run this command, it may take a few, like, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds. And that's not just because of uh, like GNS3 or, or a low end router. It just takes a little bit for it to initialize the engine for network address translation. Now that part is done. This device is set up now for each of those four. Now the key is, this is the critical part. How do we test something like that? Well, to test something like that, we're gonna create some loopbacks. We're gonna go to R1 and we'll create a loopback in the 60 network. We'll create a loopback in the 70 network, the 80 network, and the 90 network. And then we can source traffic from each one of those and verify that the correct network address translation is indeed being used. So let's jump over without further ado over to R1. And on R1, let's go ahead and create some loopbacks. I'm also going to enable my OSPF so that any new loopback interfaces I create will automatically be part of my routing protocols. So my FAR network, my FAR routers can reach those loopbacks and return the traffic. So here's loopback 60, loopback 70, loopback 80, and loopback 90. Real simple, just using the dot one first, doc, first available IP address in each of those subnets. Now, once that's done, how do we test this? Well, that part is actually pretty simple too. What we're gonna do is we're simply gonna generate a telnet session, something like this. We're gonna telnet, to 3333 using the source interface of something. Now let's not start with 90, let's start with something lower. So 333 is reachable. So R1 is gonna forward his traffic this direction. R2 is gonna translate based on the rules in place. So if we source it from loopback 60, it should get an IP address within that pool, which starts with dot 20. So let's try that. Okay, that's open and let's do a who. So right now I'm sitting on R3, telneted from R1. See my, I'm at the console of R1, but telneted R3, if I type in who, it's gonna say you're connected, and you're connected as 23.0.0.20. And that's the first IP address from that pool. Super. So we're gonna suspend that session. I'm gonna do a control shift six, let it all go, and then tap X. And now I've suspended that session. Let's do it again, but source it from loopback 70. This one, should source it from the IP address that's statically uh, configured. So the static mapping, we can see who that is. We statically translated that to 230010. So that's the static translation in, in use at the moment. We'll do a control shift six X, go back to R1 and we'll do it from 80. And this guy should be using the PAT to the specific address. I think we used dot 11 for that. We can type in who to verify that, sure enough. This asterisk right here indicates our current connection, by the way. And I'm gonna do a control shift six X. And one more time, we'll do it source from loopback 90. Now this one should go through the PAT, but to the outside address of R2. So no pool involved. So we'll see if that one flies. Type in who, and there it is. So we are being translated to the outside IP address. Another thing that we can do right here is we can go ahead and verify it. We can go back to R2 and we can go ahead and look at everything that's going on there with a show IP NAT translations. And that will show us all the translations in use. As a quick review, Telnet uses the well-known port of 23. The source port is some high numbered unused port at the moment that my router chose to use. So that's the session that's in use. And this shows the translation from each of the source IP addresses to the actual uh, NAT addresses that were assigned to it based on the rules that were set. 